So let's say that you want to build a subwoofer box into a tight or restrictive area within the vehicle. Let's say that this location requires a crazy shape to take advantage of all of the air volume that's within that location. How can we build a subwoofer box that has a super complicated shape? Well, layering or stack style fabrication is the solution and that's coming right up. Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews, I do tutorials, and I also do build log videos like this video. So if you are new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. So layering or stack style fabrication is the process in which we use multiple different layers of material, whether it be wood or plastic or other materials, in order to make a certain part of the vehicle. Now, not only is this technique really, really good for making subwoofer boxes, you could also use this for creating things like center consoles, for making door handles, for making a crazy complicated port that you would install into an otherwise very normal rectangular box. Really, all the different options for what you can do with this technique are unlimited. So right now, I'm actually gonna be using this technique to build a subwoofer box for the back of a Jeep Wrangler. This subwoofer box that I'm gonna be building in this video not only has a complicated shape that actually matches the inside of the vehicle, it also is going to feature a port and bracing. So what were the major steps that I went through in order to make this subwoofer box? Let's jump on in. If you've seen my previous video, you'll know that I was able to make this shape for the outside of the box. Now because I need part of the box to actually extend closer to the window, what I'm doing is marking the lines on my outside shape so that I can transfer them to a piece of wood. I know that I need the bottom of that part of the shape to be straight, so I line it up with this straight edge on this scrap piece of wood and template tape it into position. Now over at the router table, I'm using my go-to router bit, the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit, and we're just gonna easily cut through this material and give ourselves our shape. Back on over to the vehicle for a quick test fit, and guys, I can't even tell you how many times I had to go back and forth and test fit everything throughout this process. So if you're following along, be ready and prepared for a long day. So since I'm satisfied with this new top profile, I'm going to stick it to a new piece of half inch material. Now I'm gonna go through this process pretty quick because this is just the shape making process. If you're not familiar with these steps, go back and watch the previous video within this playlist. I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen. That video goes into detail on how to create these shapes. So what I have here is two different profiles. The top profile will extend up into the window part of the box and then the bottom profile will extend out towards the seat. Now since the top profile piece is only about a quarter of an inch thick right now, I'm going to transfer it to a piece of half inch material. Now since this will basically be my first layer that actually incorporates part of the port wall, I measure out the port dimensions and label them onto the piece. Also during this part of the process, I determined how many layers that I would need in order to have the proper internal air volume as well as the proper width of the port. Now obviously since this is a complicated shape, it can be kind of hard to determine the internal air volume, but in one of my previous videos I explained the whole process, so that will also be linked up in the corner, you can check it out after this video. To make the shape for this first piece, I had to combine a couple of different profiles. So I started with the outside shape, and then I used a straight edge to make the actual port wall itself. I then used a mobile solutions radius template to round some of the corners, and finally I cut out the end of the port using the template templates as well. Yes, this is quite time consuming, but it's going to pay off because this is again the first layer, so we want to make sure it's perfect so that we can continue to copy it into the next layer. I traced my first layer to a new piece of wood and using a jigsaw, I rough cut it out. Now that I have a piece rough cut out, I'm using this CA glue that is extremely strong and I'm going to be using it throughout this project to bond all of the layers because it bonds very quickly. Yes, you could absolutely also use wood glue, but you're going to find that 
between layers, you're gonna have to give it much more time to dry. Using this glue will allow us to actually get through these layers pretty quickly. And whether you're a weekend warrior or you do this full time, we all know time is money. Once I've given the glue some time to dry, I can start flush trimming this over on the router. But what I actually found is since this has kind of a skinny design where the port top isn't connected to the port bottom, I was getting some chatter issues. So for these first couple of layers, I actually ended up using the router shield. I repeated the layer copy process until I got to this point where I have an end cap along with my first few layers for the upper section of the profile. Now this is where an interesting transition occurs because we go from having the small top profile to the large overall profile. To do this, I started with creating a large piece that is capped on the bottom half. Now while you guys watch me work, I want to take a quick second and thank my sponsor for this episode, you guys, that are part of the Patreon support team. Patreon is a website that allows you to help support the making of your favorite video content. I want these videos to be the best they can possibly be, and I want them to continue to provide value for you in the future, but in order to do that, I simply just need your help. Once this video is done, if you could just take a quick second and check it out and see what it's about, it would really mean a lot to me and I'd really appreciate it. All right guys, let's get back to work. Now if you were watching closely, you probably noticed that I added a little bridge between the bottom part of the box and the port wall. By doing this, I've added strength to the port wall itself to prevent it from vibrating. This brace is a great example of how you can actually change each of the different layers throughout a layered design in order to add different design elements. So the next layer I needed to create was once again a new profile. In this case, it consisted of the port wall itself as well as the large overall profile. I wanted to make sure that this next layer was absolutely perfect, so I started with rough cutting before doing more work on the router with the flush trim bit. So for a visual recap, here's where we're at profile wise. So for my design for the next six layers, the profile was the same. So it was time to crank up some jams and really just go nuts on the router. For each layer, I'd apply some of the CA glue to the stack itself. And then I'd apply some of the activator to a rough cut piece of wood. I'd then apply the stack, making sure that I had excess material around the full perimeter of the box to shave away in flush trim. I would then copy both the inside and outside profile. I repeated this process until I had the number of layers that I knew that I needed in order to have a wide enough port and enough air volume. It's actually pretty cool to see these layers of materials come together. I needed to create a surface for the subwoofer to actually mount to, so I traced it to this new piece. But before I actually cut out the outside profile, I carefully positioned this circle template. I then stuck the template in place using none other than template tape and proceeded to flush trim on the router. Now I also wanted to create a surface that was slightly set into this piece of wood, so I used a large rabbiting bit, and what that did is it made this groove. That little groove just gives me a little bit more clearance for the subwoofer within the vehicle. To add this cap to the box, I've once again used the glue, and I'm now flush trimming the outer profile. And now that we have the cap attached to the rest of the enclosure, this layer styled box design is complete. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that it's complete quite yet because I'll have some more hints for what's coming up next. But really quick, I wanted to ask you guys the question of the episode. What are some ideas that you have that you think would be really cool to use layer or stack style fabrication for? I always love getting your input, so let me know by posting a comment down below. So in the upcoming videos, I'm of course going to need to add some hardware to the front of the box to actually secure the subwoofer in place. And I'm also gonna wanna do some detail work to make this subwoofer box look amazing. We're also definitely going to have to do a sound test. So if you are new here and you wanna make sure that you don't miss those videos, I would love to have you as a subscriber. As always, a special thanks goes out to Brian, Ali, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to these guys for helping support the making of these videos. As I mentioned earlier, you can learn more about that down in the video description. As always, everyone, thank you for watching.